Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's been a little while since we looked at island entrances so that is what we're going to do today and we are specifically looking at island entrances that have been terraformed. These are definitely more on the natural side as opposed to like town structured but they are so beautiful and if you're struggling to know what to do with your island entrance and hopefully they will inspire you Thank you so much to all of the island creators that have submitted their entrances. I'll put all their links in the description below for you to check out. And whilst you're there, make sure that you hit the like button and also subscribe. But without further ado, let's get into this. In at number one, we have this fabulous cherry blossom Japanese inspired island by Jolly Crossing. This entrance terraforming definitely focuses largely on the water terraforming and the intricate waterways are just so beautiful. If you don't want cliffs at your island entrance out of fear of blocking builds, and this is a great way to go. I love the little islands that are in the water and in the pond and they just add kind of a break between the water because you could have just left a nice big pond there and that would look great too but I like the fact that you can get more items in here, more details and it especially makes the area feel more overgrown and natural. At the back there is also a diagonal bridge so you can easily access the different areas of the island and because of the loop around the pond you can easily get into resident services as well. I think getting the balance between over the top water terraforming and accessibility on your island can be really hard so Tay has done a fantastic job with this one. Windermere Crossing aka Jess has done a wonderful entrance on her vintage inspired island. The space between her residence services and the airport is not actually that big but she has managed to cram so much in here. Over on the left you will see some waterfalls leading into a good shaped pond and there's a tree in the middle which is a really nice touch, some nice details around that too. Then on the right we have yet more flowing water with this lovely river and there is a bridge across and just over that bridge there is a lovely path kind of centerpiece which is all circular, I love that addition and the cliffs also frame the area really nicely, they're not too big because she didn't have the space but I don't think they need to be at all. She has also maximized the little land space that she has left with gorgeous little details like the tiny picnic setup and lots of flowers and just overgrown elements. This is so beautiful and honestly I love the muted colour palette of this island. In at number three we have this wonderful autumnal entrance created by Lodge Sands Crossing. This entrance is so heavy with trees and nature I'm in love with it. But the terraforming here is also pretty awesome. You have a nice amount of space between the entrance and that means that they've been able to add in some adorable touches like the pumpkin. As you move back there is this lovely water space with some waterfalls and cliffs in the background which obviously is where all of the trees are. It's so nice that they kind of frame the background like that so you have a great shot and I love the addition of the windmill just to mix it up a bit. To the right there is an incline which normally I do tend to build into my cliffs but I'm glad they haven't here because I think too many cliffs in the foreground could have definitely ruined that full view. Because there is so much going on in the background, having the pond area is really nice and open and how large it is also kind of allow for you to focus on what's going on in the background and all of those smaller things like the duck, the vines, the mushrooms and just all of that good stuff. This entrance just has so many layers and it really is beautiful. Number four is by the wonderful Nikki Picky Plays who you can find on YouTube. I highly recommend dropping her a subscribe. This island, as you can see, is very overgrown, but Nikki has done some super clever terraforming here. When I'm terraforming, I normally focus on the terraforming facing forward, but I've never really thought about doing this before. She has decided to go horizontal, and it has created some very, very beautiful kind of outlook on the entrance. There is a small space of land in the front, but then you have this lovely snaking stream flowing behind, and then, but on that, you have some amazing cliff work, as this cliff is is actually created into kind of a narrow walkway. It's not quite a land bridge. There's just a nice kind of path snaking through up there as well. And that gives you a sneak peek down onto resident services. So as you can tell, she didn't have a lot of space between the entrance, but she has really maximized that. 
Terraforming like this is also genius because it guides the player in the direction you want them to see the island so it kind of leads the path onto the rest of the island and I think that is what your entrance should be about, definitely guiding players on the different paths that they can take when exploring. Such a beautiful entrance and honestly a great island theme too if you're wanting to go over the top with your terraforming. The next island entrance is all about cliffs and waterfalls. This was designed by Ace and H Tansy and it's so intricate and whimsical. The entrance is perfectly framed on either side by the cliffs and those tiny waterfalls must have taken some time to create. Some of them even have their own little ponds. The path snakes through these cliffs and it's such a nice little walkway. Because of how complex the waterfalls are, it really hasn't left too much space for cliff decorating, but it has been done so beautifully with all the flowers, rocks, and even the glowing moss, which is perfect for a nighttime island. I also love the way that the moon shines down on you from that top cliff. Absolutely perfect. This style of entrance will definitely take a while to get looking natural, but the work will definitely be worth it for how stunning the finished product is. In at number six, we have this gorgeous sprinkle island created by Linny Yalei on Twitter. The colors and everything for this entrance is just beautiful. I love how bright it feels. I also love the layout they have chosen because you have so many options to go different ways and it feels nice and open, yet there is still terraforming here. Through the middle, there is a lovely natural river which stems from a waterfall, which has its own cliff in the center. Then we have two bridges. One is diagonal, which gives it a nice contrast so they're not all straight. Then on the right, there is an incline up to a cliff space where you will find nooks, which is nice. I always think nooks by the entrance is just so old school and I love it there. I think this is great inspiration if you want to add some terraforming into your island entrance, but you don't want it to feel enclosed. It gives you so much freedom to decorate the land space however you want, yet there is still this sculpted feel to it. It is truly a great way to design your entrance if you have a bit more space to play with. I don't think this would be as effective if your resident service is super close, but if you do choose a map like this, definitely something to be inspired by. I hope you're ready for number seven because this is some of the most detailed water terraforming we have seen so far and maybe some of the most detailed I've ever seen. This is by RedheadACNH on Instagram and as soon as you step off the airport you are greeted by an incline and you can already see how well thought out the cliffs are but as you head up this is really where you start to see everything that has gone into creating this whole area. At the top you can see there is a snaking stream that runs in so many different directions then there is another incline down where you are met by yet more stunning natural terraforming there is a nice sprinkly of trees wheat fields and vine furniture but it isn't too overcrowded and i think that was a smart choice because you can nicely appreciate all the hard work that has gone into the terraforming here the whole area is just so breathtaking and i hate to imagine how many hours this must have taken I hope she is providing water terraforming classes because I would be signing up in an instance. This is beautiful. For number eight, we have an island created by Canada Crossing, who you can also find on YouTube. So go say hi to my maple syrup loving friend. I really wanted to include this because most of the terraforming we have seen so far has lots of going on, but this entrance has a main focal point, which involved a lot of terraforming and is definitely a showstopper. As soon as you step onto this island, you might think, oh, it's just another entrance. But that mountain stands in front of you and is anything but normal. Having this build surrounded by water also makes it a great welcoming centerpiece and it really sets the tone for the rest of this island. This island definitely has jungly vibes and I love that he's added all of the vines onto the cliff so they have a little bit of detail there. I also think that this is very versatile so you could use this for many different styles of islands like a winter island you could create a snowy mountainscape or maybe you're working on a coastal town a lighthouse surrounded by rocks would look great up there honestly this is such a creative idea and also a great space filler if you're wondering what to do with the empty space you've got going on 
Up next, we have a gorgeous pink cottagecore-esque island created by ACNH with Sky. This definitely has all of those pastel vibes and it feels overgrown and just lovely. The snaking dirt path here is surrounded by some lovely natural water terraforming. I love how the waterfalls on the right flow into one another and they're all connected by this small little stream. And on the left, there is a corner waterfall in the front and then there's yet more terraforming behind. I really love how you have the kind of front section and then there's like a little more surprise as you head back towards residence services. The clever placement of the trees and the remaining cliffs also help enclose the area and direct you towards the plaza. She's also played around with the sizes of the different trees which helps give the area depth and makes it feel more lifelike because all the trees in real life are definitely not all the same size. I would highly recommend visiting this island if you're in need of some inspiration, it's super super cute. In at number 10, we have a witchy island created by Curie Dune. You can find her on YouTube if you want to see more of this island. This entrance is another great example of delicate terraforming. The entrance has two small cliffs either side and there is small waterfalls leading into this horizontal flowing stream. Having a smaller stream definitely allows you to put more focus on the decoration around the entrance and there's lots of different items here from barrels to books and even a gyroid up on the cliff. So if you don't want to sacrifice the clutter from your decorating due to terraforming, definitely play around with the size of your waterways and also your cliffs because that will allow you to see more of those items. I do also like what Lauren has done just beyond the main entrance as there is some even more water terraforming and to me that just feels a little bit more natural having these different waterways flowing into one another and there is also a bridge there as well so you can just get a sneak peek of that as well. Really gorgeous entrance, love all of the details here. Next up is a stunning winter island created by Rainy ACNH and I loved exploring this one. There are a couple terraforming tricks here I want to talk about. Firstly, Rainy has managed to get that bridge as close as she possibly can to the airport entrance and I think this is a great trick. Definitely if you don't want to build as much or place too much furniture around the airport but you still want it to look amazing. This bridge is also important as they have actually managed to do a double bridge entrance. The whole area is surrounded by cliffs and up behind you can see the next bridge. I love this view and this is really hard to get right, especially when you don't have a lot of room to play with. The waterfalls, the moon and all of the vines on the cliffs just make this area feel like a wintry, whimsical entrance and it's a gorgeous place to just stand and watch the Oriara Borealis. I hope I said that right. Speaking of whimsical, this next entrance is another very, very pretty one and this is by Molly. Molly has also managed to get a bridge in near the entrance, but this one is just set a little bit back, which means she's managed to decorate the entrance area with some very cute elements, including that daisy umbrella and the little tea setup. In addition to the bridge and the water terraforming, I also love the cliffs on the first layer. They are slightly smaller than what you normally see, which means you can see things like the fence peeking through, so just an adorable little touch there. The cliffs have also allowed for a nice walkway towards the rest of the island and as you walk back you can see a glimpse of the cherry blossom trees. I really really love this. It's very beautiful and it has a few different elements all kind of combined into one which is really great. At number 13 we have another wonderful entrance and this one is by Acorn Oats. This entrance is set over quite a large space so if you want lots of room to decorate maybe add a small build or just fill with beautiful foliage like they have done here it is a great layout for that. You will still have lots of lovely terraforming with the natural river and a bridge and some small waterfalls but you even have room to have a villager home right at the entrance up on those cliffs on the right hand side and the incline leading up to it is just perfectly placed there. There is a gorgeous little stream to the right of the house and it's also nice as you can see it on the lower level just flowing back there instead of just stopping. I just think that's a really nice touch. It also feels slightly asymmetrical with all of the height on the right which is a nice change because I think a lot of the things we've seen so far has stuff framing each side which I love as well but it's just nice to see different things. Number 14 is something I rarely see done and I think this idea has so much potential. This entrance was created by TJ and as you can see it's quite flat but this is with good reason as he has created a whole dock space over to the left of his entrance. 
You may be tempted to use custom designs to do this and it does work, I've done it on my own coastal island, but you can also do it with terraforming too. I love how he has decorated the little dock spaces with all the party lights and the whole area because of the time of year and the furniture he's chosen just feels super rustic. The addition of the duck on the little island is also a super cute, adorable little thing to add. You can probably see it on the background, but there is also created like an area, a space for his shops with a little bridge connecting them and leading to a canal like area. I think this is definitely a unique take on an entrance and I would love to see something like this more. At number 15 is actually one of my own islands and this is my autumnal farm court island. I don't always do lots of terraforming at my entrances, but when I do, I like to get a little bit of everything in there. So first off, I have lots of cliffs here. There is a tiny little pond to the left. And as you move back, there is this snaking path through the cliffs. There is also a double waterfall connected by a stream. If you get the angle right, you can also see that there are small top cliff layers there as well. I also thought the addition of the trees, the wind turbine and the silos also helped to get the whole area kind of framed nicely. There is also like some smaller touches like the little picnic blanket, there's even a pumpkin farm and obviously there's a good scattering of barrels too. This one is probably one of my favourite entrances that I've done and that's why I wanted to include it here and just show off the terraforming. This next one is by the lovely Hannah and this island is a work in progress but there is very little water terraforming here. This is all about the cliffs. There is a small pond on top of the cliff but this is all about those bigger picture cliffs that she's created and the small space that you have to welcome people to your island. Hannah has created this little landing area come sort of welcome area with the little stool and the kind of little desk area to sign everyone in. I imagine there is a visitor's book there. And then there is an incline up to the rest of the island. The cliff decorating is really nicely done with a mixture of foliage and trees and the fencing is nice to separate the house yard that is there from the cliffs itself. I also love the balloons in the background, that's just a really nice addition. This is so simple to do if you're worried about terraforming, but it is really effective and makes for a great entrance. I said earlier that I love when entrances have multiple walkways to kind of explore and Josh aka JJ's Cozy Corner has done just that here. Be sure to check out Josh's YouTube channel, he makes wonderful builds, not just Animal Crossing. But Josh has created a lovely natural pond area which is of a good size to get that bridge placed there perfectly and the waterfalls flowing into it are lovely. There is also lots of cliff work on the left to separate out the areas and create that barrier to the entrance. If you've ever worried about getting lost and finding resident services you won't have to as there is a nice clear walkway through the cliffs which is really handy. Although this is very natural feeling, it feels open and clean, which I like a lot, not too cluttered. Up next, we have another fabulous entrance by ACNH Tansy. This one has a definite tropical feel to it, which I love, but this layout really could be used for any themed island. As you can see, she has created an enclosed area and by some terraforming genius, she has managed to also create a really nice effect of water flowing through and even added those nice little waterfalls as well. The exposed incline at the back leads you up to this elevated walkway which gives you some fantastic views of the rest of the island. The details here are also great. If you're doing a lot of cliffs I definitely recommend adding in those vines to break up the colour and I also just love the addition of the bubbles everywhere. That is so cute. Up next we have a lovely entrance created by Gabby Biscuit. The path through to residence services here is surrounded by cliffs on either side and I like the contrast with the heavy water terraformed on one side and then on the left we have the villager home. It feels quite foresty and cottage cool overall. There is also a walkway to the front of the villager home. If you don't want to go to residence services, you don't have to. You can walk off to the left. I love the mush path and the pops of red and white here also. The mushrooms lining the path in front of the cliffs are also a nice detail. And there isn't that much space to residence services again. We've seen quite a lot of resident services are quite close to the airport so she has done another fabulous job of fitting in all of this stuff and the incline is even slightly hidden so make sure you don't miss that. 
At number 20, here is another beautiful looking island by Lodge Sands Crossing, but this theme is very different to the one we saw earlier. This one is so elegant and vintage looking. The terraforming is wonderful though, and they have done a great job of making space to display things such as the statue on its own little island. The diagonal bridge across is also wonderful touch and all of the different paths combined look amazing. They're such wonderful muted colours and really fit in with that elegant kind of feel they're going for. The trees and bushes in this darker shade of green also go really nicely with the custom designs. It's just beautiful. There is a little bit of cliff terraforming which makes a wonderful backdrop and the trees there as well they just really help kind of frame the whole area and up close if you look closely there is some tiny waterfalls too. Who can fault this? This is a wonderful entrance. 21 is another overgrown island by Curie Dune. This one does have minimal terraforming, but I just wanted to show you the difference that a little bit of terraforming can make. As you can see, she has placed a cliff on the left hand side and there is a lovely little curved waterfall here. The cliffs also provide that little bit of height to get the additional trees in and elevate the whole area so it doesn't feel as flat. We also have to talk about this clever little building at the front that she has created because she has made a little building that has a little rooftop on and then you can put items up there which is so clever. You could also do this with little storefronts too and it would look very very cute. This is so easy to do. All you have to do is build a little bit of a cliff space, put a custom design down and then you can go to town. You could put like vines or whatever there, maybe you want like an overgrown building, that would be so cool. In at number 22 we have a more structurally terraformed area by Chris. I said at the beginning these were all more natural but waterfalls are natural right. This one just has a lot more structure to it which I do like about it too. This entrance is all about creating that show stopping piece and he's certainly done that by displaying all of the robots on the cliffs. You could definitely do whatever you want, whatever fits with your island theme for this. I also like the way he has lined the entrance with all of those bushes just to add some more foliage in there. Going in heavy with waterfalls is a great way to add something a bit extra to your entrance and also adding them to cliffs really makes them feel a little bit less boring. Nikki Piggy Plays is back again with an absolutely beautiful take on Fairy Core this time. This is such a contrast to the first entrance we saw and I love it. The river is so close to the airport entrance and how she has managed to get all of these curves in there I do not know. This must have been a serious struggle as there is not much space at all. I love the fact that she has clearly terraformed the two paths that you can take by using the cliffs as a guide and by doing this she has also left the hill in the middle where she has gone to town and placed loads of beautiful pieces such as the vine and the pillars to really make it feel like a fairy core entrance. I think I just need to say it again, but how she has achieved this in such a small pace, I am just speechless. It is so, so stunning. The penultimate entrance is another wonderful one by JJ's Cozy Corner. This entrance is the epitome of business in the front and party in the back. Sorry, guys, I just had to say it. As you first enter the island, there is a lovely open space filled with lots of trees and lovely natural elements. But as you go up the staircase, you have some stunning water terraforming here, which is so intricate. And you have like the sunken waterfall. And there is also easy access to Notes Cranny, which is super handy. Aside from the water terraforming, I think this nice lower area is perfect for welcoming people to your island. And it's a good way to have a clear way to kind of say this is where the entrance is and it does allow you to go to town elsewhere on your island and build whatever else you can terraforming wise it's just a nice simple clean way to say welcome to my island and finally i'm taking you back to another one of my island entrances this is the island of snowdrop and this was a winter island that i completed in a 12 day challenge for this entrance i kind of created an l shape with the cliffs on the left and popped an incline there as there is a villager home up on those cliffs in the middle i managed to create some waterfalls and because the right was looking a little bit bare i decided to add in a pond which kind of created this small walkway which i thought was cute and it was just it's not quite a land bridge but it's just something a bit different. I don't think that this is too over the top with the terraforming mainly because I just didn't have the time but those little additions do make the whole entranceway just that little bit more interesting. So there we go there are 25 
beautifully, perfectly terraformed island entrances. I really hope this gave you some ideas as to how to lay out your island entrances and if what to do if you want to do a little bit of terraforming, giving it a go, it can be daunting, but as you can see, there is beautiful, beautiful ways that you can make those island entrances really pop. So I hope this was helpful. Don't forget to leave me a comment. Let me know what you do with your island entrance. I would love to know. Have a great rest of your day. Goodbye. Thank you.